Hi everybody and welcome to another video, a different video. Or shall I say five videos? I'm not sure. Anyway, today is Sunday. I mean, your today is a Saturday because I always premiere my videos on a Saturday evening, but the recording date of like right now is Sunday. And as most of you guys know, I start my Sunday usually with watching Sunday with Ola. We all love the YouTube premiere countdown music, right? It got titled as the elevator music and YouTube has been doing this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Um, people started joking. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen my last final one minute jam, you shall watch it because I jammed over that countdown music together with my friends Kyle Hughes on drums and Andy James of Five Finger Death Punch on guitar. Anyway, so this countdown music has been going on forever and people started joking like, oh, will YouTube ever change that music? And guess what? Yes, they did. Approximately two weeks ago, out of a sudden there was a new countdown and everybody was like, whoa! Turns out that YouTube provides 15 new countdown options for your video premiere. Um, so I dived into the whole thing and picked out my favorite five video countdown premiere songs, sounds, visual, animated things, whatever you want to call that. And um, in this video, I want to cover my favorite five. So please comment below which was your favorite one. And I hope you paid attention to the countdown on this video because that was number one. Um, so it's literally, you get five videos in one now. Do I have a clue how to do that? No. Uh, do I have a plan what to do and what to talk about? No. Let's just give it a shot. Okay, this was video number one. <laughs> Yay. Okay, let's see what's happening in video number two. Here's the second countdown. I want to talk about the mystery guitar. Um, most of you know that I had a white Pia. Had, because it's no longer white. So what happened was, um, I got in contact with David, who did a lot of awesome guitar paint jobs. And he um, was kind of like offering me to work on one of my guitars. And the original plan was I ordered the Black Onyx uh, Pia and I thought, well, if I get the black one, I can sell the white one. But with that offer, as the white one is no longer white, I'm probably keeping both of them then. Yeah. What happened was I sent my white Pia to Colorado and David did an, a, a phenomenal, fantastic paint job on that guitar. And then I received it back. There's gonna be another vlog about this, I think. Or maybe shall I put, oh, come on. Unboxing. <laughs> Guys, she's here. She's here. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, let's go unbox. This feels like Christmas and Easter and birthday all in one. Here we go, that's the neck. All right. I'm shaking. Wow, David, you really packed it safe. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you do like, you go like this. Okay. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Look at this, Ooh. And now, the body. More plastic. Wow, man. 
Oh God. <laughs> that is ridiculous. So I got the pieces back and I plan on putting it back together. The original white pier comes equipped with a white pick guard, such as this one. Um, for those of you who have never seen uh, the inside of an electric guitar, this is what it looks like. Ta-da! So all I gotta do is put the neck together with the body and then add this one, you know. But let me show you the guitar. Here you go. This is the phenomenal paint job on my new Pia. I sort of put the Floyd back in already. Um, this is how she looks from the back. Look at the, uh, that's the head. It's just, oh my God, I'm completely in love with, I, yes, and I also put the tuners back on. Um, also this part and everything. And I kind of thought, well, if I put the white pickguard on it, let me show you. This is impossible. Um, it, you know, with most of the paint job going on like right here, I can't have it all covered with a white pickguard. So I talked to David and we figured out that for this one, I need a clear pickguard and he sent one out to me, which was so nice of you, David, thank you. But it arrived like this. Can you see that? Mm. Thank you, DHL or UPS or who the hell was responsible for this. And so now I'm waiting right now for another clear pickguard, which should arrive within the next few days. And then it's time to put the whole thing together. Anybody want this? Broken pickguard? Hmm? I could sign it. Comment underneath this video, okay? Thank you. Well. That's the reason why there is no picture of the finished Pia yet, because I'm still waiting on parts. But as soon as I put the guitar together, you'll see pictures and everything. Okay, off to video number three, new countdown, yay! talk about geese. So for those of you who have bought my second solo album Insanity, you probably are aware of the song Drama Queen. I think it's number four. I'm so not prepared for this. Hang on. Great. I'm so well prepared that I can't even find a copy of my own album. <laughs> anyway. Um, we are aware of the song uh, Drama Queen, and at the end of the song, there's a little tiny snippet of wild geese. Um, let's listen to it. And now I want to tell you a little something about that tiny little snippet of geese. So they come here every year around spring and because there's a giant garden and there are no enemies, no predators, so they feel pretty comfortable here. And they are loud. Geese are very loud. In the evening time I was recording vocals and by listening to the tracks, out of a sudden I heard like in the background and it's just because they are so loud. It's ridiculous. Anyway, one day, it was a summer night and it was warm. As you know, Germans suck with AC, so I had my window slightly open. And it was, I believe, like 4.30 a.m. in the morning. And they just wouldn't shut the f Meow. up. So I took my phone while I was literally in bed ready to sleep with my slightly open window and I recorded a voice memo. And that's what you hear at the end of Drama Queen. Great, okay, off to the next video. Yee!
outfit changes are challenging. <laughs> in the beginning, I thought <laughs> in the beginning I thought maybe I should add more and more makeup as we go, and in the end I have like a corpse paint, but nah, not gonna happen. Okay, video number what? Three, four? What's the video now? Video number four it is. I want to talk about the time when we toured with Synthesis, as it stood out and was so different touring with a live orchestra and let alone just like that warmth of like a real orchestra on stage and you're like mingling, you're like sitting, merging inside of the orchestra. It was oh so special. And um, when we started talking about synthesis, I was wondering like, well, am I just gonna play guitar or am I gonna sing or what can I do? So most of you know, I came up with playing the theremin. A theremin is pretty much the only instrument existing that is playable by not physically touching it, you don't touch anything, you play it in the air because of magnetic fields. So it, I was intrigued the second I, I had this instrument and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna learn this. And even some orchestra musicians or fans walked up to me afterwards and they were like, what the heck were you doing? It's like you were casting spells on stage. Like, Ooh. To keep all that information in my head during the set, I had to make notes, you know, one song I would play the theremin and sing, the second song I would play guitar and sing, the third song I would just play the theremin. So I made the following. I made notes. Um, this little thing is literally what was on tour with me. Um, I think we did four times States, one time Europe and one time Australia. So this little thing has seen a lot. <laughs> and I want to show you a little bit of how I used to write down my notes for the synthesis tour. And you can see uh, it says T for theremin, it says V for vocals and G for guitar. So on the first song, I would go theremin and vocals, second one, guitar and vocals, third one, theremin maybe and vocals. And then we have like some songs where I go like guitar, theremin and vocal. That must have been bring me to life, was it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, so this is how my set list looked, anybody? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm gonna keep this. So this is my little notebook where I wrote down, for example, now you all get to see it. This is how I write down my notes. And here's what I did. Um, NGB clearly stands for Never Go Back, which was the opener for the set. And then I would write down the lyric and notes, um, kind of like intervals. So I was literally sight reading while singing, in the beginning at least. And we also have the theremin information, which is here. Um, it literally says, well, the key is B minor and the preset would be number 15 for me to set up my theremin right for every song. It's nice memories. Ooh, and sometimes, like look at this lithium, for example. Lithium, um, I just played chords on a guitar and I sang, but I didn't need to like write down the lyric. Um, yeah, there you have the chords. Everybody pause the video so you can play lithium on guitar now. <laughs> yep. Synthesis. Okay, off to the last video. Whoop! So, oh, by the way, have you been paying attention to all the countdowns? Have you, have you, have you, have you? Because that's the real purpose of this video. So please pick your favorite countdown music and uh, comment in the comments below. There is a hair. Ugh. Put it in the comment section below this video and let me know which is your favorite countdown so I can use it for further videos next Saturday and the Saturday after and the Saturday after 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 this last section is just I want to say thank you because honestly we created this awesome beautiful positive vibe group of people and I don't know about you I'm looking forward every Saturday to see all of you in the chat and it's like a mingling of friends by now and I truly believe a lot of people expect me to put out more music related content like guitar stuff and but let me be really honest here um the past year and a half have been horrible 
horrible. Um, as a musician, when your life consists of touring hotels, venues, meet and greets, traveling, jet lag, flights, and out of a sudden everything gets reduced down to just your couch, I didn't feel inspired at all. I mean, what was I supposed to write about? Couch? As soon as we will be back to playing life and touring and something happens, again for real, I'll gladly put out musical content, but as of right now, I have never felt less inspired and I know that this goes for a lot of musicians. Even if they tell you how inspired and how grateful they are and how awesome they're working and the past year and a half was shit. And I can't wait to go back on tour and see you all again, meet you, and just get a little bit of my normal life back. And I guess I speak for a lot of people that this is the case. I guess in the end, all I wanna say is thank you for sticking with me for the past year and a half um, with all the crazy things that I've done with uh, Gen Gen Off The Line, with Style of the Week, and who knows, maybe there's another Style of the Week soon. Um, the one minute jams, of course, and all that. Thank you for sticking with me. And not only me, all the other YouTube content creators, because, and believe it or not, I'm not doing YouTube for money. I have never made a single penny off YouTube. I really do that to rise awareness of positive energies and spread happiness and give people something to look forward to. Like I'm looking forward to this awesome strawberry squad group meeting up every Saturday. It's, it's beautiful and it makes my heart shine and I love you to the moon and back. Let's see the strawberry squad grow and uh, yeah. I guess there's another three minutes with coming up next week. And um, yeah, this was the <laughs> YouTube premiere countdown marathon. I'm out, bye.